Senator Stephen Armstrong, a fictional character from the game Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, is this swole jack dude with nanomachines all over his body, and, uh... He, he doesn't take a slight, he's 100% natty, I swear. Uh, so, <laughs> so there's that. But also, he has the sheer amount of strength to the point where he's... He's really strong, right? Like, he's able to, like, just carry right in, and he's able to just stab the president two in half with his bare hands if he wanted to. He stabs a sword, just with his bare hand, just crushes it, goodbye, right? And he's able to just carry large infrastructure too, and he's... He could do a lot of things with this body, basically. Especially with the nanomachine technology he has in the system. And the way that he has this nano nanomachine technology is through a nanomachine heart, which he has implemented into his body, right? Which, when you look at the heart, there's, you know, the heart itself, of course, but also many tubes sticking out of it that would send over the nanomachines over to different parts of his body, right? And so, when you look into some of the game files, right, or what they call Codex, uh, there's another character called Doctor, right, who who's uh, specializing in cyborgs and cyborg research and all that stuff. And he talks about Claytronics, which Claytronics is basically... Like, it, that's the in-game way of explaining how nanomachines really work. It's like, oh, well, you go from the heart over to a different part of the body. It creates this little block and, like, this clump, right? But it wouldn't come from the brain, though, for sure. Clay, like molding clay. Picture a great number of nanomachines formed into a block. These nanomachines are capable of changing position relative to the others on command. They move how they are instructed, and so the block can take on any number of forms. Imagine clay which you do not alter with your hands. You simply think of a shape, and it becomes that. What's the connection, Doc? Well, what if you built a human form out of this clay? A form that can freely bend its arms and legs however it pleases. In other words, a completely free-moving nanomachine body. A user could adjust the binding force of the nanomachines to armor himself against damage. Okay, let's say that's it. How do I beat him? Well, he can't possibly be directing every individual nanomachine with his brain. One thing I forgot to mention as well. If you were to play the Jetstream Sam DLC, you could also see Armstrong, as soon as his arm gets severed off, he's able to pick back his arm up and then reattach it back as if nothing happened, right? And so, having all this information in mind, I thought to myself, hmm, that's really interesting, but I don't think that's actually gonna happen. Or that could happen. Right? So, I decided I'm gonna look up a bunch of research articles and I'm gonna figure out how this all works along with some of my prior knowledge from just taking neuroscience courses and all that fun stuff. So, what do we got, right? Well, first I started off with the signaling. How do we command this heart to actually go from point A to point B, right? I came up with two possibilities, right? One is through humoral responses through the endocrine system and heightened levels of cortisol, right? Through the HPA axis. Considering that Armstrong is activating a sympathetic automatic nervous system when he's in a fight or fight response mode, we can we can presume at that point that his his vessels dilate and therefore his heart rate also increases. And also there's gonna be a high amount of cortisol in his body, right? So what else a possibility if of course that all doesn't work, the high heart rate and also just Increase the blood vessels, all that stuff. If that doesn't work, we also have cortisol levels that would rise up, and there would be receptors onto the heart, possibly, that could just have cortisol bind onto it, and then activate the heart to release whatever neurotransmitters it could release. Right? Or not neurotransmitters, excuse me. Nanomachines. <laughs> there you go. Right terminology, right? The second option has to do with what I mentioned previously with the increased heart rate, and that's with the nucleus of the solitary tract, which, as I mentioned before, there would be activation of the sympathetic automatic nervous system, right? So, activation of that would then lead to sending over signals from the vagus nerve over towards the nucleus of the solitary tract, which then sends over signals to the heart to, well, increase heart rate, right? We could also rewire the nucleus of the solitary tract, like some of the wiring from there over to the heart, and have another have another pathway, rather, just to sort of activate the heart and release those nanomachines, right? And so, that's a signal from brain over to heart, but what about heart over to body part, right? Well, to understand that, we have to look into two different things, right? We have to look at graphene and the carbon nanotubing, right? So, graphene is this carbon-based molecule, or this compound, right? Which is used for mainly scaffolding and is used for... Well, can be used for multiple different things, but mainly used for scaffolding and also signaling. According to Cafe Maria's article uh, titled Graphene and Neurosurgery, the beginning of a new era, right? In which they use 
Well, their main use of graphene is mainly for uh, regenerating synapses in the body. But as I mentioned earlier, well, in the article, they also claim that it could be used as a signaling molecule as well, sending over ultra high frequencies over towards different parts of the body, right? And that's thus allowing for synapses to occur because of the whole scaffolding and the signal transmission and that stuff, right? So from that point, we can kind of build on from that and assume that, okay, graphene is probably the thing that's being released from the neuro, neuro, ah, nano machine heart. I don't know why I keep on wanting to say neuro machine, <laughs> but nanomachine heart, right? Graphene is being released, and then it's just being sent over to the desired area of the body, right? With the uh, dilated uh, blood vessels and all that such. And so, size wouldn't be too much of an issue at this point, so like, I'm not too worried about graphene being too much of a chunky molecule, right? So yeah, now graphene is out into the body, it is somewhere, but what does it do exactly, right? Well, as I mentioned before, it can act as a signaling molecule or signaling compound, right? And so what it's gonna do from there is that it's gonna go over to the nanotubes and or the carbon nanotubes, right? Send the signal over to there through binding or through just like electrical synapses or whatever it may do. It's gonna cause a sort of response, basically, right? And it's gonna activate the sort of scaffolding and therefore increase the strength. Some articles I looked into, there's one from Malarkey uh, titled Applications of Carbon Nanotubes in Neurobiology. There's many potential uses for a carbon nanotube, but one that I found interesting that I'm gonna to touch on upon later is the fact of attaching electronics onto these carbon nanotubes. With the electronics being added onto the carbon nanotubes, right? We can have graphene as like this artificial signaling molecule go over to these electronics that are found in the carbon nanotubes and act as a sort of receptor almost, or artificial receptor. There could also be multiple different electronic devices attached onto these uh, carbon nanotubes, which I'll explain later as soon as the more we get into this argument, but just know for now that there could be electronic devices also attached to these carbon nanotubes that would be getting signals from graphene, right? So assuming that, okay, now we have this signal onto the carbon nanotubes. Cool. But how do they actually harden, right? Or rather, do they actually harden? Do they actually give us a strength and all that stuff? Well, Scientifically, in a lab, we can't really prove that, unfortunately, because, again, he's a fictional character, and we don't have the technology to do that yet. However, there has been some theory done by J. Ali in uh, High Performance Electrochemical and Electrothermal Artificial Muscles from Twi Twist Spun Carbon Nanotube Yarn. That's a long title. <laughs> and basically, what they thought of is like, if you made this carbon nanotube yarn, right, you were to put that on a muscle, you were to, like, wrap it around this muscle, or like some muscle fibers with that such, you would get 25 times more strength from that yarn filament onto the muscle than if you just had the muscle by itself. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, whoa, that's really cool. I'm not gonna lie, right? And it is super cool to think about. But it also gives us an explanation as to how Armstrong is really strong, right? It must be because of this like sort of filament on his body that's giving him all this, like, massive strength and all that such, thus allowing him to have this sort of ability to just, like, you know, pick up these heavy objects, and we could also go further from there and say that, oh, he's more durable because of this, and, you know, it could be more enhanced the carbon nanotube yard that might be in-game compared to what we have, in what we theorize, at least, in real life. So, to summarize so far what we have, right, we have two ways of signaling from the brain to the heart. We have either heightened cortisol levels, which there would be receptors on the hearts, which would take those cortisol levels and get a signal out of, or there's a rewiring from the nucleus of the solitary tract, which would send the signal back over to the hearts. From the hearts, we would then release a, signaling, a carbon signaling mo molecule that would be more artificial, called graphene. Graphene would then be released from the heart through the blood vessels and such, and would then bind onto receptors that were artificially placed, well, it would be electronic that would act as a receptor, rather, and graphene would bind onto that and then send over the signal to the carbon nanotube uh, filament, right? And thus leading to the increase in strength and that such. So, all that has now been explained, and we've now just covered that basis, but... But how do we get the reattachment of limbs? And, to be honest, I couldn't really find any articles pertaining to the reattachment of limbs with nanotechnology and such, because otherwise... Oh my god, the media will go nuts over this, right? I mean, I would definitely go nuts over this, like, <laughs> god, man, you know? But my prediction, my theory at least, one one that I would hypothesize is... <laughs> As I mentioned previously, you can add on electronic devices onto these carbon nanotubes, right? Theor theoretically, at least. So, one other electronic device you could have is just other magnets, right? You could have mag magnets that would go from, like, one area of the carbon nanotube to another, and if some of them were to break, Magnets. 
Done. Reattached. Right. Just like that. And there would be these magnets, not only in the muscle fibers, but also on the neurons too, just so that you can have that functionality to move, right? Because sure, you can just like have a magnet on the muscle and just like attach it on. And it's like, all right, cool. Now you're just going to have this like arm just kind of sagging. And it's like, oh, let me punch you. Eh, eh, eh. You know, like you're not going to be able to make a fist and go, right? <laughs> But yeah, so most likely there's going to be some sort of electronic device onto the neurons and onto these muscle fibers and such, allowing for that reconnection to happen. Maybe on your skin as well, like some sort of magnets, but they would most likely be underneath into like some other tissue and lining and such, but that's going to be very hard to sort of uh, wire or make of together. So for our case, we're just going to say, well, you had your muscles and then you got your neurons. Bones. Ah, you don't, you don't need to worry about bones. They're going to be there anyways. You're just gonna, they're just different infrastructure. <laughs> but, um, but overall, though, that's my theory of how these carbon nanotubes would actually work. Well, rather, excuse me, let's dial back. This is how I think that Armstrong's nanomachines would actually work. And to answer the question, you know, could, this, could we actually do this in real life? We could do something similar to it. We could technically make super soldiers, and we just give them this sort of, like, microfilament with these carbon nanotubes and such. We, we make them strong, you know? We make them very big and big bulky men, right? So, but, of course, that's gonna lead to ethical issues, and then there's also the whole, like, supplementing thing, and, like, uh, well, correlation with supplements, and also this could lead to, like, uh, other issues with, like, crime, and then uh, rigging athletic sports and such, and it just leads to a lot of issues. So, I prefer if this wasn't really a one-to- well, even a 75% to 100%, like, like, I don't want, like, a 75 similarity to Armstrong's animation. I don't think anyone would. Although I wouldn't. I'm no evil mastermind anyways, so. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, that's my theory, and yeah, hope you guys, hope you guys enjoy my theory. Hope you guys, uh, yeah, if you have any thoughts on this, just let me know, and yeah, that'd be cool. Okay, bye. That's a nice argument, Senator. Why don't you back it up with a source? My source is that I made it the fuck up.